kids i hope you all are fine today we are going to start chapter so read and enjoy chapter 6 no room for a leopard read and enjoy i first saw the leopard when i was crossing the small stream at the bottom of the hill the ravine was so deep that for most of the day it remained in shadow this encouraged many birds and animals to emerge from cover during the hours of daylight few people ever passed that way as a result the ravine had become a little heaven for wildlife below my cottage was a forest of oak and maple and himalayan rhododendron a narrow path twisted its way down the trees at the bottom of the hill a path led onto a grassy edge surrounded by wild dog roses teams ran close by the edge tumbling over smooth pebbles nearly every morning i heard the cry of the barking deer i saw pine martens and a handsome red fox i recognized the footprints of a bear as i had not come to take anything from the jungle birds and animals soon grew accustomed to my face after some time my approach did not disturb them goose in the oak and rhododendron trees who at first would go leaping through the branches at my approach now watched me with some curiosity as they munched up the tender green shoots of the oak however one evening as i passed i heard them chattering in the trees and i was not the of their excitement it was as tough the langurs were trying to warn me of some hidden danger a shower of pebbles came rattling down the steep hillside i looked up to see an orange gold leopard poised on a rock about 20 feet above me it was not looking towards me but had its head thrust attentively forward in the direction of the ravine it must have sensed my presence because it slowly turned its head and looked down at me it seemed a little my presence there when to give myself courage i clapped my hand sharply the leopard sprang away into the thickets making absolutely no sound i had disturbed the animal in its quest for food but a little later i heard the quickening cry of a barking deer as it fled the forest the hunt was still on the leopard like other members of the cat family is nearing extinction in india and i was surprised to find one so close to masuri probably the deforestation that had been taking place in the surrounding hills had driven the deer into the screen valley it was some weeks before i saw the leopard again although i was often made aware of its presence at times i felt certain that i was being followed and once when i was late getting home i saw two bright eyes staring at me from a thicket i stood still my heart banging away against my ribs then the eyes danced away and i realized they were only fireflies one day i found the remains of a barking deer that had been partially eaten i wondered why the leopard had not hidden the remains of his meal probably he had been disturbed while eating climbing the hill i met a party of hunters resting beneath the oaks they asked me if i had seen a leopard i said i had not they said they knew there was a leopard in the forest the hunters had seen the carcass of the deer and the leopard's pug marks and they kept coming to the forest almost every evening i had their guns banging away for they were ready to fire at almost everything there's a leopard about they told me you should carry a gun i don't have one i said there were few birds to be seen and even the langurs had moved on i thought no more of the men they were unpredictable and to be avoided if possible one day after crossing the stream i climbed pari tibba a bleak scrub covered hill where no one lived this was a stiff undertaking because there was no path to the top and i had scrambled up with the help of rocks and roots there i found the ruins of what must have been the first settlers just a few this was a stiff undertaking because there was no path 
to the top and I had scrambled up with the help of rocks and roots. There I found the ruins of what must have been the first settlers. Just a few piles of rubble, now overgrown with weeds, sorrel, dandelions and nettles. As I walked through the roofless ruins, I was struck by the silence that surrounded me. There was something else of which I was becoming increasingly aware. The strong feline odor of one of the cat family. I paused and looked about. I was alone. There was no movement of dry leaf or loose stone. The ruins were, for the most part, open to the sky. Their rafters had collapsed and joined together to form a low passage, like the entrance to a mine. The star cavern seemed to lead down. The smell was stronger. When I approached this spot, so I stopped again and waited there wondering if I had discovered the lair of the leopard. I wondered if the animal was now at rest after a night's sun. Perhaps it was crouched there in the dark, watching me and recognizing me as a man who walked alone in the forest without a weapon. I like to think that he was there and that he knew me and that he acknowledged my visit in the friendliest way by ignoring me altogether. I did not venture any further. I did not speak physical contact or even another glimpse of that beautiful creature springing from rock to rock. It was his trust and I wanted and I think he gave it to me. But did the leper trusting one man make the mistake of trusting others? Because next day coming up the path from the stream shouting and beating their drums were the hunters. They had a long bamboo pole across the shoulders and slung from the pole, feet up, head down, was the lifeless body of the leopard. It had been shot in the neck and in the head. We told you there was a leopard. They shouted in great good humor. Isn't it he a fine specimen? Yes, I said. He was a beautiful leopard. I walked home through the silent forest. It was very silent. Almost as though the birds and animals knew their trust had been violated. I remembered the lines of a poem by D. H. Lawrence. And as I climbed the steep and lonely path to my home, these words echoed in my mind. There was room in the world for a mountain lion in me.